Hi folks, I'm Dave. And I'm Ben. Here we are again for some hotly anticipated videos. We've been waiting to get to this one for a little while. Um, and if you haven't seen what we've already done, and you know, we, I think we've got like 10 videos now in the Fuse tutorials, something oh, like right. 7 or 8 or 9 or 10, that well, sort of number it could, be, could even be 20. It's Don't not though, it's not, it's not 20. <laughs> Go and watch them, because in this video we are going to be combining a lot of what we've already learned. Now this will be separated into two parts. We're going to do a bit of a beginner introduction to the concept and then in the next video we'll be looking at a more advanced implementation of this whole system. A couple of bits of housekeeping as normal. So first of all, I apologise, I've still got a bit of a, um, of a dodgy throat. So uh, you're going to maybe hear me break into <laughs> my falsetto singing voice, um, which is terrible. Uh, so I do apologise about that, please bear with me, I'll, I'll get better, I'm eating strepsils like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> um, and of course, please like, share, scribe, subscribe, subscribe, if you are a scribe, great, um, and feel free to leave a comment, let us know exactly what you think, and any ideas for future videos, any questions. Before we get started actually Ben, I've noticed something a bit weird, a bit strange. You'll know what I mean. It's it's weird, but I'm not even sure if I can believe this, really. But it looks to me like not everybody in the world owns Fuse for Nintendo Switch and is on the Fuse Arena. Surely not. I think. Well, I checked. Mm. And, yeah, it's not everybody in the world. So we need to fix this, right? I mean, this, yeah. is, a, this, yeah. is, this is a serious problem. Mm. Agreed. Um, what are you playing at? Get yourself a piece for Nintendo Switch. If you enjoy these videos and you don't already have it, you can do all of this on your Nintendo Switch and start learning how to make your own video games. Um, and head on over to FuseArena.com to be a part of our growing community of not wannabe. That's, I was going to say wannabe. I meant the word budding. Budding programmers and game developers sharing their ideas. We've got people of all levels, absolute beginners, incredible high-level experts and everything in between all making awesome awesome things in their own right uh, and it's getting more and more exciting every single day so i think that about wraps it up for the introduction what is this video about well it's sprites so, <laughs> so actually it's a good segue because on the fuse arena forum we've had a few different requests uh, for this video topic um, so if you do have a good idea for a video or something that you want to see covered, obviously leave a YouTube comment. We'd, I do read every single one um, and try and respond to every single one. But also the arena is a great place to talk about the videos and I'm on there every day as well. So sprites. Fuse for Nintendo Switch has a sort of a, a built-in sprite engine, as you'd call it. And it's really just a, um, it's, it's like a big toolbox. That's a fair comparison. Yeah, kind of. Like you've got, you know, your toolbox, you've got your spanner, you've got your screwdriver, all these different things for the job, but with game creation mechanics. So it, it adds a really, really easy way to just get an image or a picture or anything, actually. It can be text, behaving like a little game character. And there are a few things about how it works which really make it very, very fluid and, and easy to get started. So as I said at the start, this is an introduction to sprites, only the basics, and we'll be covering the, uh, the more advanced sort of end of things in the next video. Okay, I think that's about it. Let's, uh, let's get started. Ben, can you, for me, just give me a basic clear and update loop? Because this is where we start with all things. If we want a program that has things happening on the screen continually until we stop the program, Loop clear, update, repeat. You can never really go wrong there. Sometimes we get rid of the clear to see what it looks like, but this is usually the first step. Okay, right, let's go back up to here. And um, we need to start things off. Now, you don't need an image to get started per se, but it's going to help a lot. Otherwise, we won't really see anything. So, I was having a look through the, uh, the fuse media and I found a quite a cool little little uh, Cyclops sprite. So let's load that in first and can you call it sprite image? No. I can 
try. <laughs> so we've made a variable, sprite image. In that variable, we're going to store a loaded image from the fuse assets. So if we now open up the fuse keyboard and on the glowing media button, press that. It's actually already saved into my recent uh, asset. So if I go on recent here, we've got the toast from uh, yesterday. <laughs> Still need to see that game. We'll absolutely. We'll see. Um, actually, I'll mention at the end something really, really cool on that front. So here it is. It's the uh, the Untied Games Creeper asset. Untied Games is uh, an artist called Will, who you can go and actually check out. We'll put a link in the description actually to uh, to his YouTube channel. He is also one of the developers who worked on Fuse. Awesome guy, incredibly talented. Uh, so here is his little creeper. Here is his little creeper asset. I really like this. It's got a lot of personality. Just moving around the screen like this. <laughs> uh, and let's load this in. So we've got, we'll press Y, and that will paste our file name into the load image and give it some speech marks for us. So now we've got our image. But we need to do a few more things. First of all, we need to create a sprite and assign that to a variable. So we might as well just call it Sprite. Right, so Sprite, as you can see, isn't syntax highlighted. It doesn't turn blue, doesn't turn red or anything, or green. It doesn't exist as a word, so we're going to make it one. Sprite equals Create Sprite. Now, Create Sprite is one of those functions that doesn't actually need any information in the brackets. A bit like Clear, a bit like Update. Let's get rid of the keyboard, actually. And make the text a tiny bit bigger. There we go. Now, on its own, that actually does a lot of stuff here. It gives us a structure. Now, this is the reason why we've saved this video until now, after we've already covered structures in the previous couple of videos. If you haven't seen them, please go and check them out. It will really, really help to understand what's going on here. Um, now that we've done this, we actually have an, a bunch of automatically made structure properties called the sprite properties and they make the sprite behave in certain ways. But before we can really use them and actually see what they do, we need to actually set the image to the sprite. So right now, this, this, this image called sprite image, it's got nothing to do with anything. It's just called sprite image. It might as well be called bananas, or socks, or penguins. Which might it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'm already regretting this, but okay, so just to get the point across, just having the variable name as something that makes sense doesn't do anything. It just makes it easier to read and to remember what we're actually planning to do, but the label itself can be anything. So now that we've done this on line eight, can you um, do a set sprite image function call, please? Awesome. And in the brackets, we need two functions, sorry, two parameters, two arguments. The first one is the sprite that we want to assign an image to. So the sprite is called sprite, comma. And then the next argument is the handle, the variable, which stores the image, penguins, or sprite image, if you are sensible. <laughs> but penguins, if you've been following not. along, or whatever you're there now, <laughs> but they're not going to be sensible, are they? Well, what am I talking about? In fact, actually, it's a really common feature of the workshops. But as soon as I say, this variable could be anything. Could be bananas, could be socks. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I've, seen, I've got a room full of Bob and Fred and Jeff. <laughs> Which is fine, as long as you remember to always call them Bob, Fred or Jeff. So, now that we've done this, we're actually okay to get started. Can you go into the main loop? And if I just run this as it is, we'll see nothing. And that's because we're missing one key function, which is draw sprites. Again, it's a function that doesn't need any um, parameters, just a pair of brackets. So draw spite, uh, sprites, you're going to see something quite weird here. Can you actually see that? It's right up there, top, your top left, my top right, our top right, it's on the monitor right here, really, really, really tiny. And the reason for that is because by default, the sprite's position is at zero, zero, which is the top left of the screen. And the reason that you can see just the bottom quarter is that the middle of the sprite, just like when we do a circle function, the X and Y point of the circle is the middle of the circle. And with the sprite, the X and Y point of the sprite is the middle of the image. So the 270 degrees of that image are off screen. So first of all, let's put the sprite in the middle of the screen. 
make a few lines here just to give some space. So here we're going to access one of the sprite's automatic properties. And they're nice and easy. What do you think it is, Ben? To set the X position of the sprite. I don't know, Dave. Use your brain. Intuit. <laughs> it's sprite position. It's sprite.x. Sprite .x. <laughs> the sprite.x is the X position of our sprite. If we use G width divided by two, we know that we'll put that, that that this will put the X position right in the middle of the X axis, and lo and behold, the Y position is sprite dot Y position. No, it's not. It's just sprite dot Y. Imagine that. It would be really mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Or, I'm really or, glad. Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, sprite dot X, sprite dot Y. Yeah. And uh, let's do a G yeah. height divided by two there. Cool. Now, usually, when we are setting properties in a normal structure, for example, in uh, the last video, we were doing uh, just shapes on the screen, weren't we? And we did yeah. this, a circle with a different number of sides. And we had a dot X pause, a dot Y pause. And in the loop, to make it actually appear, we had to do a circle function call and use those properties in the, in the function call but with sprites you don't have to do it when you set the dot x and dot y and you do draw sprites fuse will take all of that information and use it just like we were doing in our previous videos with the circle uh, function and all of those structure properties it's a bit small isn't it so should we fix that it's a bit too small no one is going to like to see a sprite that small so there's a couple of more prop a couple more properties that we can use here, dot x scale and dot y scale. Uh, there's no underscore or anything yet. Dot x scare and dot y scare is, is how much it's scared by the x axis. Oh yeah, you wrote an R first. You didn't. Act. You corrected it faster than I was talking, so it just really didn't land. But um, <laughs> so if we put a I don't know a four in in here, this will make it four times bigger. <laughs> on the x-axis and then for the y scale we can do the same thing if you want your sprite to look you know correct well actually yeah there's a good demonstration if we have 10 for the y scale it's a bit stretched <laughs> a little bit stretched it's 10 times bigger this way only four times bigger on the x-axis let's actually make that one i'm sorry <laughs> let's make that one 10 yeah 20 nice of me there we go Blimey, that, that is quite intimidating. Is it looking at me? No, it's looking that way. Which is at me, I think. No? No, it's over there, and it's looking that way. Yeah, yeah, if I got up and, yeah. I'd, it's always weird when I like watch the video back, back <laughs> afterwards, and we're like, we're not even pointing in the right <laughs> places. But um, we'll get there as we get used to this. Um, Maybe. So here's our sprite. No, hopefully we won't. I, I, quite, I, I find it quite entertaining. <laughs> Here's our sprite at the correct scale that we've got it here. Um, if I just, just to introduce a couple more properties, if we just put this a bit smaller then, so we've got some room to grow, as it were. If we do a 10, yeah. There's a couple more sprite properties which can define the rate at which the scale changes over time. And this will introduce one of our sort of um, more important functions that go in the loop. And I believe it's x scale underscore speed. That's the one. And if we put that at, well, I don't know, choose a number. Six it is. Now, in order to actually see what this does, we will need another command in our main loop. Because just drawing the sprites, it isn't, it doesn't access the things that are meant to change over time. So the X and Y scale speed options keep redefining the scale to be whatever it is, add this, add this. So we won't see anything. But if in the loop we add update sprites, sorry Ben, there you go, <laughs> update sprites, and you will tend to see the loop structured in this way. If you look at any of the Fuse tutorials that use the sprite commands, I believe that Gothicvania and um, the Fuse Super Platformer also do this. Uh, oh, and uh, the incredible Super Mega Arena Blaster uses the sprite engine to incredible effect. You'll see usually clear update sprites first and then draw sprites at the end 
obviously before the update so we can actually see the effects. Um, to be honest, you're not going to really notice much of a difference if you don't do it in this order. Because we're talking about a six, a sixtieth of a second's difference. Yeah. But when that loop's been running for ages and you have a lot of stuff in that loop, that could be the difference between something feeling immediate and feeling a little bit delayed. Um, so you tend to want to structure things in this in this kind of a way. Hopefully this is nice and visible for people. I'll just move it to the top of the screen there. So we've added our update sprites. And now this will update the values of those automatic properties. So it takes our X scale speed and applies it to the X scale and the same for the Y. And now our sprite will grow. It's pushing me down. No, it's dragging you towards it. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe I'm getting closer to it. <laughs> well, at this point. We're, we're, we're too close. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like in our eyes at this point. Unrecognisable. And you get the picture. Okay, so we've got our scale speed. Um, what we will do, can you just comment these out for me, Ben? Because I think it might distract from this next addition that we make. So if you wanted your sprite to start changing scale over time, that's a really, really good way to do it. How about moving the sprite? Any ideas, Ben? Move underscore the underscore sprite. You've got it exactly, but you're missing underscore along underscore the underscore yeah. x underscore yeah, axis underscore by underscore a underscore rate underscore of. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not that. No. Don't worry yourself. <laughs> uh, it's just sprite dot x. I believe it's underscore speed. Yes. So you'll notice that sometimes there's an underscore, sometimes there is not. It tends to be the single property and then underscore what adjusts that property. Mm. So if it's the x, x underscore speed, it's the speed that is moving along x axis. Same with x scale underscore speed, it's the speed that it's changing on the x scale. Cool, so this should move our sprite this way and down, I believe. Yes, down there. At the moment. Incredibly slowly. Now, there's a good reason for this. In order to make the sprite commands feel a bit more intuitive, we um, actually have a different method of applying the speed. So normally when you say a circle moves at, you know, if you do circle x plus equals 1, mm. you're moving the circle 1 pixel per frame. So that's um, yeah, 1 pixel 60 times a second. Yep. But in the sprite properties, it's by pixels per second. So if we wanted that to move at one pixel per frame, we'd need to do a speed of 60. And that will now move at the same rate that a circle moving at one pixel per frame will move. And it's actually quite an easy one to figure out. If you're used to one and you're used to another, you just need to do the right multiplication. Multiplication. <laughs> so would it be just divide by 60? to calculate the number of pixels per frame. If it's a speed of 60, yeah. divided by 60, that gives you one, yeah. we're moving at one pixel per frame. And if you wanted to do um, pixels still, as you enter it, you just need to do the number, divide by 60, and then you'll get your result. If you don't want to have to do the multiplication for yourself, a computer is a good way to do that for you. They're much better calculators than we are, for the most part. <laughs> okay, you so, can even do that in here. That's, yeah, that's exactly what I mean, Ben. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I mean. So you could put um, you know, 120 divided by 60, this sort of thing. It's whatever works for you. And as always, the best thing to do is to experiment with the numbers. You get a feel for these things by actually putting it in yourself, running the program, and seeing it happen. And one trick that I always do, actually, to get a feel for this stuff is to map it to the controller. Because then I know the, how much I need to push it to actually move it at a particular speed. And always printing the value is, is also really, really helpful. Okay, so that gives us the position moving along the x-axis and y-axis, the scale speed increasing and decreasing in scale. There are a couple more. Let's do sprite.rotation. Now, one might think that this is the amount that it rotates, like with the speed. But it's not. This is actually the amount that you are initially rotating it by. So, Ben, if you put 90, we're rotating the sprite 
before we start the loop by 90 degrees. So we're going to get this. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not looking too well, is he? Looking a bit worse for wear. <laughs> um, if you want to have it rotating during the loop, as part of update sprites, it is just rotation underscore speed. Let me write that in there for me then. And this one is going to be degrees per second. So if we put a 90 in here, we'll get... <laughs> it's a, you know, that's actually quite interesting. It starts to sort of blend into one thing with four limbs. Totally different beast. If we put something more sensible, sorry then. Nice. It looks like he's just, fast. it is, it really is. It looks like he's just been flicked really hard <laughs> on, on the top of his head. So it's going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but not, I don't know. That's got some real spin, like it, like a snooker ball where you're hitting it you know, really, really hard with a lot of spin. But it doesn't travel too far and too fast. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. Off he goes. Let's go back there. Let's have a one. Let's see what one looks like. I'll get rid of that clipboard as well. There we go. That's quite nice. Quite nice speed there. We could also change the X speed to something like 90 and we'll get uh, maybe 100, 180. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Like a nice rolling boulder <laughs> where the rotation is you know, mapped to the movement in some way. Trial and error. It is just, yeah. it gives you a feel for things as well. Like a lot of the kids at the workshop will, you know, they'll have a problem and I'll just come over and sort of know the numbers that they will need. And I'll be like, how do you do that? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, it's just trial and error. You get a feel for it, then you sort of get an idea what numbers might work. Um, and even though it makes me look really, really good, someone like Luke will come along and just go, <laughs> I'll show you how to do rotation in accordance with physics and gravity. Okay, and when quantum resistance. mechanics. Yeah, obviously quantum mechanics, yeah. Is there a sprite or not? <laughs> the, m maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, okay, so that's rotation speed. What else have we got? We've got, oh yeah, this one's really cool. You can change the sprite's color in a very, very controlled way with sprite.r, sprite.b, sorry, g, and sprite.b. So if we do, I think this is actually between zero and one. So if we do a sprite.r as one, and then, let's just copy that for you. And then we do g and b at zero, both of them at zero. So max red, no green, no blue, sprite's red. So maybe if you needed your sprite to get hit at this point, mm, yeah. it could sort of go red and then roll away. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, although we're setting all of these properties out of the main loop, there's a long pause then. I was like, of course, tumbleweed of a sprite rolling past with a rotation speed of one. And an X speed of 180. Um, even though we're setting these things outside of the loop, you can do it inside the loop too. You can adjust them on the fly inside the loop. You know, it's, it's not all. It, it, it doesn't have to all be outside the loop like this. I just thought that was important to mention. Um, Should we try something like that then? Let's let's do Increase that. Increase the rotation speed. Okay. While you do that, I'm gonna another sip of my warm water. From my throat, that is. No one enjoys drinking warm water. Well, maybe you do. I shouldn't say. <laughs> okay, it's just going to get 0 0.1 degrees faster. Whoa, that starts. To... <laughs> and before we know it, we're off in. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, Ben, let's put it up in the top corner and yeah. then have it move down yeah, okay. at a faster rate. So what will that be? Um, if we not g with divided by two, maybe divided by four. And you could actually probably just do g high divided by four as well. Yeah. And then the y speed will have to. We could increase that actually over time. Mm. Keep it at four, but then I think we'll probably want to add like one to this, um, because the speed is in pixels yeah. per second. So. So y underscore speed. Plus equals one. Let's, Let's see what we get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. It could do the going a little bit faster. Maybe if we added five. Uh, 
and maybe a bit less on the X because now the X speed, it's going too far down, you know, so it needs to, or maybe more on the X speed even. That's what we need, isn't it? We need it to go faster along the X axis. That's right. Yeah. There we go. Ah, nice. <laughs> very, very nice. And then let's have it get more red as we go. So if we get this yeah. at zero, That's let right me just see what this looks like actually then. Yeah, I thought so. So if we have it all at zero, we've got no red, no green, no blue. It's just black. So we can't see it anymore. We, we will actually need these all to be one for it to be the normal color. Because you're not actually changing the color of the sprite. It's the tint. So the sprite already has the values that it has. When it's white, it's just the colors that it already has. But you're, if we reduce the green and the blue as we go, so in, in, oh, yeah, in the loop, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, then we will effectively be seeing an increase in red. But it's not, it's technically a decrease in green and blue. And I've just realized that we're talking about this red, green, and blue changing as if it's just completely obvious. Mm. And I'm not sure that we've even talked about this much in a previous video. I don't know if we have or not. not Fair enough. Either. Fair enough. I mean, it has been a while. <laughs> and we've had Christmas and New Year in between. So um, if you didn't know, all colors of light on a computer screen are made up of three colors, red, green, and blue. And I think that you actually learned this in school quite early. Because I've taught some year fives and fours that knew this. Mm. So they are getting this information somehow. I'm just starting to learn in computer science the slightly more technical bit of that. Oh, yeah? To do with cameras. Okay. Which is, I don't want to say it's not fun. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's not fuse. It's not fun, is it? It's not as fun as just the nice, simple, you're going to be way ahead of me there. Because, I mean, yeah. I did music. Right, at yeah. college, so uh, and, and at university, not computer science. But, I mean, it's a bit of a testament to how Fuse can get you into this stuff. Yeah. I did not come from that background, and yet now I'm, uh, I'm into it a lot. So, I'm making my own little games, and yeah. Um, right, so we're reducing the green, reducing the blue. Very nice. I really like this. Yeah, this is cool. It looks really, really good. So if you actually, you know, maybe you could use the map editor, or just draw a big triangle where it is and we'd have a little hill for it to roll down you know <laughs> um just going to check the time remaining on the video there because we could just go with this forever yeah. and just uh, you know, allow it to just sort of become whatever it wants to be i think that this is pretty much everything i wanted to color oh not color cover <laughs> funnily enough then it's a good example because we are just directly changing the properties green and blue but we could also do this differently we could do this as G speed and B speed. Yeah. Okay. So if you just let, let, let's uh, let's try that G underscore speed and B underscore speed as well. And I'm decreasing this. Right. Um. No, actually, it's just it, it's an equals. Oh, equals. If that's sorry, then I beg your pardon. We wouldn't want to do this yeah. in the loop, would we? Because then we're never going to see a change because we just we keep resetting it. So if we take these out of the loop, I thought we were going to speed it up. Ah, fair. Okay, well then, let's let's do something like that. If we set it to something nice and low to begin with, actually zero. And then we can change it in the loop. So if we get those and we put them back in. I've gone backwards two steps here, I do apologise. So let's, let's tab these in just for the sake of my formatting needs. Okay, and if we now, yeah, just like with rotation speed, we'll plus equals a value. It's going to have to be really small, yeah. But this will change faster. So it's not just the same as manipulating the number. We're actually changing the speed at which it changes. So it should, when it starts to turn red, oh, minus equals. <laughs> we're reducing the green and the blue. Yeah. And we're going into negative numbers. So as it starts to turn red, it turns red quicker and quicker and quicker. You can get a lot of control over all of these different sprite properties this way. Okay, <laughs> so we had a small technical hitch there, but we're back, um, and also a multiple phone calls, so uh, we just wanted to make sure there's no unnecessary noise, but we're back in. What I wanted to do was to just give you a quick challenge. Um, maybe we've got some of that in the edit, we'll see, but I want you to take this project and do something with it. Now, there are a lot of different sprites that you can use, and I wanted to just showcase a little bit of 
Untied Games as assets. If we go down to Untied Games, and I believe they're quite far down. They're past all the explosions. Here we go. So any of these single image sprites, the arachnid, for people who don't have a fear of spiders. <laughs> Actually, I was going to suggest all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't find them too bad, but I mean, if I saw that, then that would indeed frighten me. Oh, what am I doing here? There we go. I should stare at that for a while, leave it on screen. No. Um, we've got the creeper. We've got this chompweed, which is like um, something that you might recognise. A demon, a dark watcher, evil eye. We've got some ghosts and some imps and goblins and a purple version. I love these oozes, actually. <laughs> You can do some really interesting things with the scale on these and get them to sort of look like they're breathing kind of thing. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's do a little bonus, a little bonus bit. I want to show you this. So I've just replaced our sprite image, so it's no longer the, the little creeper eye guy, and it's our green ooze. And what we'll do is just get rid of this um, rotation speed and this stuff. And I think we can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. And what we want to do is take this here and put it in here. If we just tab these across and remove the comments. Right. It's a little trick that I was figuring out earlier. Oh, and we don't need the, the speed either. And we can actually leave it in the same place. There we go. Nice and clean. Right. There is a... This is a very, very simple application of some maths functions, which you might recognise. I think um, I know where this is going. You know where this is going? I have a feeling. What we'll need to do first is to create a little counter. So could you just make a, a variable called count? Uh, and then we'll do it after draw sprites. We'll do count plus equals one. And then on the x and y scale speed, then what am I going to do? Count. Oh yeah, counts, that's it. And then do this do the same one on the air, yes, both on sin, because weird things happen if you use cars on one of them. <laughs> and this is quite cool though. You get this sort of pulsating sprite effect. Now you can do this on either of the axes to make some interesting stuff happen. And especially if you um but if you multiply the result of this by 0.5. You see what I mean? <laughs> it actually starts to look like a slime. Mm. It's really, really cool. And in fact, because this is the y-axis and we're going this way, we probably want to do the negative, don't we? So if we do minus, then we'll be hopefully... Oh, no, okay, that's not exactly what I was thinking it would do. <laughs> so you'd have to... Trial and error. Trial and error. It's always the way forward. What about if we did sin minus count? Kind of. It's the same thing. It is yeah. exactly the same yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because um, minus sign of something is the same as sign, sign of the of minus, minus thing. Something. Yeah, the operation. So I've just shown my um, my newbie maths ability there, <laughs> and Ben has shown me up there with his advanced computer science degree. But <laughs> <laughs> degree, not yet. <laughs> degree. I beg your pardon, Ben. I always uh, put you as older than you are, and more accomplished than you are. I'm gonna put you on a pedestal. <laughs> So it's quite an interesting effect. I thought that you might like to see this. And we can also, if you do a cos on one of them, and actually, if we do the same thing here, I'll put that in, you get this sort of circular <laughs> scaling effect where it's going out and in at the same sort of rate. And these functions, we're not going to discuss them in this video. It's they not the right important. place for them. If you're learning about them in school, they are really quite cool. In fact, you, we should. You don't appreciate them straight away. It's very, very true. I mean, I remember being in maths. I think it's like year nine. Uh, that you might nine start learning about sinning costs. And I, it, it's with triangles and all your... And you tan. Know, all your tri yeah, and tan, of course. Uh, not arc, sin, and arc, co cosine yet. Um, I think at that point, maybe you do. Yeah. A little bit? It's, I've done that okay, okay. Um, yeah certainly in GCSEs um, yeah questions will come up on uh, involving both of them okay okay that's good to know so it's been quite a while since I was at the GCSE so yeah when I was there it was more like write the number five on this piece of <laughs> <laughs> slate <laughs> not quite um, <laughs> but 
The thing is with maths, and when you're learning about functions like sin and cos, when you're just looking at triangles on a whiteboard, it's very difficult to actually think, this is really, really useful and engaging. Yeah. And, oh, you know, what am I going to use this for? Yeah, that's the thing with maths. Um, it, they Teachers tend to teach you a lot of what you need to know because there's often a lot of it. It's what you need to know. Um, yeah, but it's harder to grasp uh, because you don't know what you actually need it for. Applications. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that code is so fantastically yeah. beautiful for is that it's like a living application of these abstract things. And when you can see sin and cause make a slime move around <laughs> in this cool way, it's like, oh, now I actually want to understand this. And it doesn't stop there. Sin and cause are used for a lot of things, whether it's camera movement Mainly or circular. rotation. Yeah, yeah. Anything involving a circle, sin and cause. <laughs> but we will do dedicated videos yeah. on sin and cause as so well. If you don't know too much about it yet, don't worry. I mean, a good thing to do also is to look at some of the Fuse uh, yeah. tutorials. In the 3D camera movement tutorial we use sin and cos to great effect there to make sure that we are rotating a camera properly and how to move a camera around something really really nicely okay i think that about covers it for this introduction to sprites in the next video we'll be talking about how to use some of those awesome sprite sheets that you see so you might have seen a bit of a hint when we looked at the uh, media there but if you look through the Fuse assets, there are a lot of really, really cool looking character sheets where you've got different frames of animation, walking and attacking and stuff. And using them with the sprite commands is actually really beautifully simple. But it requires an understanding of a couple of problems first. And so this video has probably gone on for long enough. Yeah. Let's call it a day here. We'll see you in the next video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for watching. I've been Dave. And I've been Ben. See you next time. Typical right at the end. I know. <laughs> okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>